Hello, this is Kelly from Rude Pursuit. And today we're working on these cute little uh, charms for your journals or to decorate whatever little things you need to decorate. And here's some examples. Here's a really cute one on this little piece of fabric. Look how adorable that is. I don't know why, but I think these, the little tiny uh, charms that you attach to journals, pages to like little pieces of fabric are just the cutest little things. Here's another one. It has some different color to it. And then I'm going to show you how I made most of these. Oh, I did a little. Here's a... I had these marble beads that were kind of cute. They look like little marbles. So let's see. There's a blue marble here. Where's the other marble? It ran away. Oh, here it is. Did I show you this one? Yeah, maybe. Anyway, it's kind of very multicolored. All right. Did I show you this one? This one's really cute too. Okay. So those are cute, and then I'm just going to lay out, I think, a nice piece of white paper to show you the sequence of uh, the, the tools that I use, the pieces, and then how I attach them together. So what I'm using, first of all, is a safety pin. I'm going to go in close so you can see. I... <clears throat> I am utilizing the little hole at the end of these safety pins. So for this particular project, the bulb pin or the open-ended safety pins don't really work. So those are, I'm going to use the bigger ones as an example, although I am using a lot of these little tiny safety pins. I'll just put it up there so you can see it. But these are going to be my examples. For the bottom part, I have two different things that I use. One is using one of these, I call them jewelry pins. So if you go to the jewelry section of the craft store, you see these little pins and they have uh, an eye at the top. And the eye is, uh, you can, how do I say that? You can take your pliers. Ooh. and pull it open do to do or close it back shut so it, it's nice if you want to attach something but for the moment I'm gonna use a different one now because I wrecked, I wrecked that one uh, so this is how it's gonna go for the this is my first example okay and you would need beads so let's just say I grab a couple of beads. Hopefully these will be ones that don't move. I think that one's too big. Just use smaller ones. Okay, so let's just say I, I'm, I'm going to grab three beads. So they would go on the jewelry pin like so. Dun, dun, dun. And I'm going to pick different beads ones that won't roll away yep aren't i smart today yeah you knew it you could tell you were like wow she is smart today <laughs> oh my goodness there will just no <laughs> that's ridiculous you're ridiculous wait i think i have some square i have no idea what i'm doing all right okay so we've got two beads <laughs> two beads you I usually like to put three like for instance this is how this would go here I'll put a, a little sample on there but anyway this is this is how this would go together put the sample in the middle of the done one and then the one other thing that you need is what they call in the jewelry world as a jump ring okay so the jump ring is this handy little little ring that's not a solid circle no it is not it's bendable 
so you can separate it like that. Sorry, I still have nail polish on my fingers. You just separate it like that. And then you can jump or link two items together. That's why it's called a jump ring. And you're going to connect this jewelry pin to the jump ring and the safety pin to the jump ring. So it links those two together. Now that is kind of how I've been doing it. However, there are a couple of variations. One of the variations is to use thread instead of a jump ring. You want to make sure that your thread is pretty secure. I also tried Baker's twine. So I did this. Here's an example. It's got Baker's twine on it. That's what I used instead of the jump ring and it, it it just adds a little effect to it but if you don't want to see that thread at all you could even add beads to the end of the thread and give it more dimension but you can just use the thread and make sure it's not old thread it's got to be really sturdy probably you want the polyester and you know kind of give it a good tug and make sure it doesn't like this pull it apart and make sure it doesn't snap. This is good quality thread. So it is a little bit vintage, but it's really, really strong. <laughs> and uh, like I, so this one is with the, so let me say that again. The Instead of the jump ring, you can use the thread or Baker's twine or, you know, Whatever, you really can't use anything thicker than that because they won't fit through the beads or any of the holes that you've got. So, now for other addition, other additional things for charms, you can do this, which is I have bought junk jewelry, like on eBay, where you get like a pound of junk jewelry or lost earrings like this was like maybe an earring that got lost and in that case you can simply take your thread dun 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 like so and attach it directly to the end of the safety pin like that and then you attach it you know you tie it at least three times and then you've got a nice little dangle so that is how you do that but I this the some of these are necklace charms like a locket this was an uh, a dangle earring oh I'm not even I know I clo I went in close and now you can't see what I'm talking about okay a dangle earring a locket This little beaded deal. Here's another necklace charm. This was an earring, a dangle earring. So, you know, here's, a, here's another dangle earring. I have just random charms in here. I don't, that was an earring. This was some kind of a, a charm from like a scrapbooking thing, I think. So, you know, whoa. the other thing you can do is I've, uh, this is actually an older necklace, hard to, to tell because the rocks are really cool, but these have miniature jump rings on them. So you can actually snip these apart and, uh, you know, take like this, you could just take two of these, two of these and... Uh, you know, make that a charm. So that would be really easy peasy. Like these little glass beads. There's all kinds of goodies in here. So you'd be surprised. This is like a little plastic heart. I've had this since I was a kid. I, I don't even remember. It'll, it'll maybe come to me, but I've had that since I was a kid. And it's all faded and it looks kind of cool. And here's another uh, bracelet that you can just kind of snip 
them apart, they're connected by jump rings. So if you have ones that are just, that are not connected by jump rings, beads on a necklace, that's a different situation. Then I just cut them apart. That's what this is. Cut that necklace apart and then they're all just loose beads again. So that's how that goes. So I will just do a couple of these just so you can kind of see what they look like and how they're gonna they're gonna turn out. So I think I'll just go ahead and stick with this one. Oh, you know what I was really excited about? This, look at this guy. Very pretty. I'm gonna scooch out a little bit again. Oh, your tools. You need, this is the part where you, there's no other really, there's no real good option. If you're gonna use the jewelry pin and the jump rake, you're going to have to have a jewelry pliers. That's what these are called. This is a three in one. It means it's got this part at the end, which is for wrapping wire into a circle. The middle part is the pliers part where you smash something together. And then down here is a wire cutters. Technically, you can take a piece of wire and you make your own jump ring also. Then I have a second pair of pliers for the jump ring because in order, in order to get them apart and put them or and or put them back together, you really need to grab one on this end and one on this end like that. So you're taking that jump ring and you're pulling it apart. I'm trying to get it to an angle where you can really see it. You're pulling it apart or putting them back together. I think you can kind of see it right there. But yet, we're just getting blurry. Yep. Okay, so that's about how it is. I can try, let me try to, to, uh, oh, and if I ever lost my hands, I would think I would want my, my hands to be replaced, not by a hook, no, 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 not by a prosthetic hand, but by pliers. Yes, one plier. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay, so here it is. This this is a bigger one. Shows it better. So you see, they pull it apart, and you need to put it back together. And when I put it back together, ooh, get a good grip on it. So I put it back together, and then I usually take my big pliers, and then I squeeze it like that together where it splits. So I hope that's helpful. Those are the tools that I use and the methods that I do. So we're gonna do the easy one. I decided I'm going with this method. I'm gonna use my string, my thread. That's also what they call that. <laughs> and I'm gonna thread my, I think I wanna use a gold one. I changed my mind on the silver. Okay, gold. This one looks pretty good. And so give yourself plenty of thread uh, and room to tie a knot because if you cut your threads too short in an effort to save thread and you spend 20 minutes tying your knot because it's, they're too short, that's not a good thing. It's just not. It's not not the way we want to do it. You you can put multiple charms on them. They're they're kind of cuter when you put multiple charms on. We've got a couple little things dangling. I didn't do that this time. I think this this one might be able to stand alone. Who knows? Maybe I'll add some more later. I still can always take a jump ring. I think that's three. Yeah. Oh, and the other part I wanted to tell you that's kind of important is when you do the string or the baker's twine, it's a good idea to just get to your knot right where it is, dab it with some glue until it, it can never come apart. Yes, the glue helps. And then I'll just trim, trim it off right to the end. And you can barely see it. So now the fun part is to take the thread or the thread. Yeah, it's going to be one of those days. You take your fabric and you pop it on the fabric. And then you look at how pretty it is. 
Look at how pretty that is. That gel has got so much color in it. It's amazing looking. Uh, yeah, so I, I really like it where you put it right at the end. So many of them, you just attach it anywhere along here. But we don't need to do that. It stays nice to the to the to the right or the left side and and then you can attach it so it'll kind of stick out on your you know uh the edge of your paper might be right here and you could have it as a tab or something like that so like for instance let's try this let's just try really hard to explain it <laughs> Oh, here, I've got a little book right here. So let's just do that. So let's just say, we're going to have to do it this way. Mm. How can I do it? <laughs> so maybe I would just attach it like a tab. This is too big of a piece <laughs> to show you. All right, let's do it. Let's do it for real. Okay, I'm going to take a little piece of fabric. Where are you? Okay, here's a piece. Oh, that looks kind of cute with that. Not that. All right, I'm gonna snip it into tab size, and then I could just I'm gonna do it on here. Pretend. So I would attach it, glue it, glue it, and then I would pin it. That. and then it hangs off the side so it's not actually on your page it's on the edge so it's not well theoretically <sighs> anyway <laughs> I'll try it on here yeah so paper clip can be over there but the, the actual charm is dangling off the side of your page look how cute that is that's adorable Okay, I really like that one with the shell. I'm glad I did that one. So that's one version. I think it really helps to just kind of see, you know, the, the, the sequence of how these go together. The other thing I wanted to let you know, so I'm gonna have to create a charm. Let's see here. Got those, got these. I have to be careful and not make my bead so big. I don't know what that means. Uh, so I'm going to, you know, load, load the pin with the beads. Oh, what colors? Maybe some gold. We'll just, we'll just do a little, oh, that looks quite nice. And then I'll do one of these. There. Oh, that might be the best one yet. Then I have this trick where I kind of, pin together so I've got my thumb at the bottom and my finger at the top and that kind of keeps everything situated then I've got my jewelry uh, I use the wire part to spin this so I'm wrapping that pin around in a circle until I've got it all the way down to my bead all the way down see like that and now there's a hole right at the top see the hole and that's what you feed your jump ring through I'm gonna use a small one usually I can open it with one pair, pair of pliers but I can rarely close it with one pair of pliers did I open that enough hopefully okay so I've got that fed on. Now I want to add a safety pin. And I'm going to use my favorite, which are these little tiny brass ones. They're, they are vintage. And then I take my pliers. Oop. And put that right back together. And then I kind of, this is a small enough one, I can feed it back together, kind of squish it both ways. <laughs> that makes sense. 
and then it's all done. Look at that. And then you can just attach it. Like I've got a little piece of lace here. I attached two of them too. And today I'm kind of excited to go through all my junk jewelry, which is in here, and just add safety pins and then they'll be journal, journal ready. Journal ready. So I think that's so cute. Okay, let me just, little piece of lace. Oh my goodness, that's adorable. I just love it. Okay, so yeah, just like hanging off the side of a page. They're just so pretty. Just this little size where there's like two or three, you know, pretty, pretty small beads. So, oh, we have so many of these. I did, I kind of went crazy and I was like, I'm going to make a video. And then I just kept, I kept making them. But you know, it's kind of good because I then I, I was able to think through how to how to put this video together a little bit a little better. So if you if you want to do this, uh, you know, you you might need to purchase jewelry pins, jump rings, and one of these jewelry pliers. That's what they're called, jewelry pliers. They don't all have this three in one situation going on but you definitely need the wire wrap to it and then you'll need you should just any steal your husband's plier from the garage and then don't tell him just just take it and he'll never know the difference <laughs> except for when he's complains that, that they're missing <laughs> okay don't do that but anyway you well, you might just you could borrow it just borrow it and then they almost always have the wire cutters and the extra set of pliers all right no stealing stealing's wrong all right well i will put a link in the description i'm gonna hope and see if i can find something on amazon where they have all three of the jump rings the jewelry pins and the uh the jewelry pliers maybe i can find like a little kit or something if not then i'll post a link to them all individually because i know if you're not familiar that may be a little bit tricky to find them so i will do that all right well as always thanks for coming along and i'll talk to you later